the exchange of any form of sex for money. And yeah. I agree with that. I would too. You also said there's absolutely no good that comes from sex work. Yes, period. Yeah, and I respect your opinion. But. But. What's, but you disagree. What's the but? What's the but? Yeah, what's my personal but? opinion is I feel like everybody should be able to do whatever the fuck they want, period. Why? Well, but what good comes from it? Like, tell me what good comes from it. That's what I'm saying. Mm. People, Wait a minute. Wait, we have to address that everyone should be able to do whatever they want. Yeah, that's true. Because what if a guy wants to down there on the street below the balcony? What if he wants to jerk it in the middle of the street? He should be able to do whatever he wants. He's gonna do. What I will say is that crazy people donated twenty five dollars. Only tramps is not only prostitution; it's prostitution scaled up for mass distribution. I bet you can find Cheeto boogers in that cleavage. Cheeto boogers. Mm, you know, I don't eat Cheetos. Do so you yeah. prefer Doritos? <laughs> I feel no. like you're more of a Doritos gal. Mm, I do like Doritos, but I don't eat them often. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> do do, do we want to talk about everybody should do what they want? Yeah. Okay. I just feel like, yes, that, that's a good example. No, that should not be done. However... Where it's something that is consensual and like it's appropriate as far as OnlyFans, people sign up for that and they get what they get. I think that should be acceptable because that's what people want to do. Okay, so if a 60 year old man wants to date an 18 year old girl and she consents, is that cool? Personally, Legally. no, I don't like it, but it's legal. That's why it's a legal thing. But, but I think, he sh so he I don't think should it's okay. be able to do it though. According to the law. According okay, to the law, what, do not? What if uh, this is <laughs> Andrew? Sydney donated twenty-five dollars. Oh. Hey, Maddie, me again. Your so pretty smile, Zeldes girl, isn't being black a curse in the Book of Mormon? <laughs> Huge fan, Brian. Mm. Rachel is great. Thank you. Simp donated twenty-five dollars. <laughs> Opera girl is W wife material. Damn, they're in love with you. Holy I know. shit. <laughs> We're going to get her married by the end of this thing. For real. Yeah. Apparently, all you need to be able to do is sing. Uh, yeah. So what if what if Brian here wanted to uh, dig up As his Watson grandma donated and have his What the fuck? That's Rachel wild. Wilson so was like flipped so more than okay. an apartment in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, more like, times who, than he's a not hurting door, anybody, right? Seen more helmets like, what's than Hitler. And last, but not least, she has a posse like a punched lasagna. What the well, I think that this goes back like you said anyone Who should be able to West do what they want. I hear you. I'll take that back. Clearly. I will take that back. But I mean, I, as far as what I do with my body should not affect how you feel. Oh, I but it it affects society, so it does mm. affect how I feel mm. because you're producing something negative. And so it's going to have a negative effect I'm on society. I'm very body positive. I love my body and I love I, I wish everybody would love their body and you could do what you would like with your body I, as long as I it's mean, not hurting somebody. I love my body too. I respect my body you and I don't want to are destroying it. The world with your twerking. Oh. You know, <laughs> All right, go cry about it. You know what, though? It's it's an actual <laughs> thing that uh, for girls who, let's say you're a girl who wants to be a virgin until the right man comes along and marries you, it makes it very hard to do that ever since a bunch of women broke like the, the contract, right, back in the 60s, 70s. If even 30% of the girls are giving it away, like it's going out of style, it makes it really hard for those of us who do want to marry a guy and stay with him and like you know it just kind of ruined the whole marriage thing that we have every girl who turns 18 is signing up for only fans almost every girl like i, I think well, like, can i ask a really question are are on on the wedding out of this table. well i was gonna mm -hmm. say i mean like y'all feel the way that y'all feel <laughs> right. that y'all are still married you I, know, so it didn't ruin it for also do you want the guys that are gonna sign up didn't pay for OnlyFans. That's my other question. Well, nope. why? Mecca but Wing why Zero are so donated many men doing that? It's actually not true that Very. whites are more likely to be serial That's killers. Check out the database of all serial killers in the U.S. that Florida Gulf Coast University mm -hmm. and Radford University have compiled. Yeah, I was pretty sure. That Selena Gomez donated twenty-five dollars. PSA: five mm. yeah, K like plus video, viewers guys. and two guys, K like likes. Like the video and boost the algorithm, people. Yeah, help us also, out. Thank you, Selena. Also, OnlyVans is 100% prostitution. Selena. Definitions matter. Mm. Also, I think another problem with, like, the liberal opinion about anything in society today is that you guys think, well, it's not you, so it doesn't matter. Or right. worry about yourself. How's that hurting you, though? And it's right. like, it is. I should care because 
what you produce and put out into the world has an effect and will have an effect on you and those around you. And so to have the opinion of, well, just worry about yourself or you do. Yeah, we, I mean, we can look at data to see how bad Mm -hmm. things have gotten since women's liberation. And if you look at it, it's like the, uh, if you look at kids who are in a juvenile facility, kids who are in any sort of substance Ebony abuse Toto treatment donated center. $25. Why have anomaly vans like... to not share it? Give me a hint to find it. <laughs> <clears throat> it's my name and then what I study. There you go. So yeah, if you, if you look at like uh, kids who are homeless, uh, kids who are on psych wards, Almost all of them, like it's like 80 to 90% of them come from fatherless homes or homes that are disrupted. Uh, Marriage got thrown out the window. There is no family cohesion anymore. And how is this helping anyone? How is this do whatever you want? Just don't hurt anybody or take my stuff. Like that hasn't worked for us. We, We no longer have any sort of like societal standard for morality at all. Oh, sure. Just do well, whatever you want. Then, well, I mean, shouldn't you be chastising you know, fathers for leaving too? Then, I mean, well, I would, except for that, mostly it's the women leaving, not the Cody men. Donated oh, I mean, you just threw the dollars. examples. Away. Imagine okay. perpetuating the downfall in men because you like the money. You'd ride the thin line of the law and say it's okay because it's legal. If killing someone was legal, would you? No. <laughs> Mm-mm. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I think that feminism has led to the destruction of the nuclear family, which is a central part of society. Tom Jones donated $25. I'm very body positive, LOL. Mm -hmm. LOL. Thank you, Tom Jones. (laughs) Uh, Guys, we're going to wrap up the show here. Um, Before I do that, we we will do Twitch Raid. Any final thoughts from anybody before I start wrapping this up? I would just, like... The only thing I don't want to like come off as like condescending. I just like think that you guys can do a lot more with your lives and you have a lot to offer and you're beautiful women. And I don't think that you need to, to do sex work. Like we said, that's not the only things that we do. Right. That's the minimal of what like, I do. That was, that's just all you heard. I didn't even say that when I was asked, what do I do? I brought that up after the conversation was brought up. If you noticed. Why did you feel the need yeah, to not you? share that? Cause you guys that's, do? that's oh, not my main thing that I do. Is it something that you're ashamed of? Not really. Honestly, that's why I said it. When it do was you do up. BG content? Boy girl content? Mm, no. You've never shot anything I with a gun? I have, guy? but do I sell that? No. Have you ever sold it? Sounds like a yes to me. <laughs> what about you? Do you do BG content? Yeah, because that's just something that I like to do with my partner, but. How many men have you done BG content with? Two. Two, two different guys? Okay. Is that how they found out about each other? Because no. various crazy people will pull it back up. No. Uh, well, here I have a question. But if someone is giving sex away or selling That'd it for two ninety nine, it becomes yeah. a race to the bottom. Cheap poon is just that cheap poon. No man who has any self respect is going to commit. Would you guys, if you were on a first date with a guy, would you guys disclose that you guys do OF? I actually I have before, um, but I don't know if it's something that I would just like off the rip, whatever. But I would, but I guess like I would say I would want a man to disclose like something like the fact that he has kids to me on the first date. But I don't think that equates. But yeah, you think it's a bigger deal to withhold uh, somebody's uh, parentage status as compared to their sex worker status? Um, I don't think that um, it's comparable at all i was just saying like an example of something that i would want but can you i mean i would my position would be it would would be a bigger issue for a girl to hide her sex worker status than her i mean we're talking about first date but i'm also not a sex worker underscore donated 25 not a sex worker thank you for coming opera singer you're a dream. Damn, they love you. Hope it's not the last time I get to see you. Well, sex worker is sort of this all-encompassing term, but like, I mean, you said you've done boy-girl content. You do OnlyFans. Like You're I a sex worker. I don't sell those videos. What I sell are provocative pictures, and they're not even nudes. So when you say you make boy-girl content, yeah, it's not for consumption. Ask. It's like it's private content, asked. or. Yeah, but I already said that that I don't sell that. So. Did you have you sold it previously? No. 
I could so have, how do am you I make getting content? gaslit here? Yeah. I could have sworn you said you've done BG content. I think you're trying to gaslight me and tell me that I said something that I are, didn't say. Are you just trying to say like you said you, said you did BG with content yeah, with? Oh, that's literally uh, what I said. Okay. Wait, you said you did BG content with well, two guys. You asked a question and I just answered it the way that I answered it. I don't even understand what that really means. I think so there was just a misunderstanding. I think she was just like, you boy girl content can just mean a video. And so she's like, I took a personal video with like my boyfriend or something. And then you asked well, me how many. But that's content, not content. Content, content tends, is posted. Yeah. Tends to imply consumption. like it's okay, out I mean, there. If you You're 28. Will you be more attractive at 38 than you are now? Yep. <laughs> I don't know. What about you? Yeah. I'll so be you're more. 18. You'll be more attractive at 28. Yeah. Okay. You're so. 18, you'll be more attractive at 28. Yes. I guess, Rachel, you two on this? Absolutely not. <laughs> That's peak delusional to think that you're going to be hotter in 10 years. I, this is one of the ones that just stumps me. When women are like, oh, I'll totally be hotter in 10 years. Like, even if you look good for your age in 10 years, even if you like lost weight, things like that, it's like, you don't get hotter as you age as a woman. That's not how it works. Like attractiveness, physical I've attractiveness. Seen some, some women that really do. The industrial revolution right. is what allowed feminism. If you ever exactly. wondered how come women's liberation didn't happen for two, four, six thousand years before this, it's because technology is the thing that makes it possible for women to feel they're equal with men. Look at this studio. Were any of these lights this Wi-Fi, these computers, any of this designed by women? No. Do the women nothing. upkeep it? Do the women build it? No, the men build yeah. this technological and world that makes us think, and it's so oh, funny. I can be a it's career so, woman. I can be in charge. It's so funny because women will come on the show and say they don't need men on a microphone yes. that men built in a building right, that right. men maintain. We know men have duties yes. to provide and protect. If men aren't out keeping the electrical grid up, there's going to be problems, oh, yeah. right? I mean, they yes, have I know to it's do more that. of a man's job, but like women can do that job too. No, they can't. Like, yes, they you can. You don't see any women doing. Do you know? They can. Like, do you know the what it entails to to, to create, but you're make, and lay concrete? For it is impossible. To, they can't do it. Do okay, but there are men that's who insane. also can't. do There are disabled men. There sure, are really skinny, but the weak only men. people who can do it are, are men. But there, I mean, about chores. Why don't you take it away? Okay, so one of my most viral tweets that had like 5 million impressions or something was just me saying that since I've been with my husband, he has not done any housework. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't do housework. I do the housework. The kids help me with the housework. He doesn't mm -hmm. do any. How do you guys feel about men and women if they're cohabitating, they're married, whatever, sharing the housework? Should both people do housework? Should it be the woman's responsibility? What do you guys think? Let's start with her and we'll go around. Um, well, I'm a, do you, do you work like a job besides no for, i mean then i think it's like if he works a job full time then i think it's fair that you're doing a job at home while he's doing a job there like i mean that makes sense to me okay and if both people work do you think they should split it then personally yeah i do i do okay. what about you i would honestly say pretty similar like for your situation it makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. i think Obviously, if you guys are both working like nine to five jobs, you can't expect for like the woman to just come home and just clean up after you all the time like you're a child. So I think if you're both working, you should, it should be split. If you're a stay-at-home mom and like you're just at home with the kids all day, then it just kind of makes sense. Now, I had a lot of women who were stay-at-home moms and they were like, but I get exhausted after being with the kids all day. So when he gets home from work, I need a break. So I'm like, wait, so the man has to work all day. And then when he gets home, he also has to work. So you're going to have a break. So how do you feel about that? What about if the woman is really tired and the man comes home from working like I, a 10 hour shift? I think, I don't know. I think that's just like being lazy, honestly. Yeah. I mean, if you're home all day, like obviously like, okay, like you've been with the kids all day, your husband gets home. Like obviously you should spend time with his children and maybe do something like that. But like he shouldn't be expected to like go mow the lawn right after work. Right. Do you think Carly? I think it should be proportional to how much you work outside the home, but I would disagree that if a woman is at home, she should be doing 100% because, I mean, you say he's working all day and he comes home and he has to do chores, then that's him working all day. But if a woman is with the kids all day and then doing chores, she's the one working all day. So it's like either way, someone's working 24 hours, basically. I think there needs to be a really, little bit wait, of slack Do you really up. think that being a stay-at-home mom, so like I have five, mm -hmm. with five kids, do you think that as a stay-at-home mom with five kids, I'm actually working the whole day? <laughs> Depends on how old your kids are. Yeah. They, okay, yeah. like let's say the one it was the hardest when they were zero and three and seven and nine and eleven. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I think you are working all day. I, I personally... If you're managing your household. I was going to say, when I come home from work, I am doing, like, nothing. It, it's nothing. But if, but if I was to come home from work and then I have to take care of children, I mean, like, that that to me is just more work. Like, my mom was a stay-at-home mom, and I was, I was on her house all day. Like, she was definitely working for me all day. Did you have siblings? Much older. Not, not like... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because see, to me, that's the difference. When you just have one or two, they are all on top of you constantly. By the time you've got four or five, you have your own little ecosystem, and the kids are all kind of like helping each other and taking care of things, and the older ones have a lot of responsibilities and can help and things like that. So If they I have good you, examples, though. Like, yeah, if, if the, you, you, have to, you have to teach them that well, system, of course, you know? but it's, we're talking over the course of 20-something yeah. years. You optimize. And you optimize and the system. I think you just it just kind of happens if you have a big family, which that's why I often tell people if we were having bigger families, I think women would actually have a much easier time if all the other women weren't at work because yeah, what was hard for me yeah it was like my mom worked my sister worked my friends were everybody worked i was the only stay-at-home mom mm -hmm. so i didn't have help whereas if it was 100 years ago all of us are staying yeah. home all of us have our kids your cousins come over your sister comes over mm -hmm. your church group gets together and there's like more help so which yeah. is so much more fun yeah. yeah it would be so much more fun <laughs> yeah but, okay what do you, what do you think fun. about men and women splitting housework so i have an interesting take so my dad is top provider like like and my mom has a part-time job that she does like just for her own little slush fund but um he, but he also she cooks and then he'll usually do the dishes um he, he kind of likes doing it i guess it's for him he's that's just like his personality like he was i guess when he was a kid telling his mom not to fold his laundry because he wanted to fold it a certain type of way okay. and so 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 i come from a, a family where it wasn't uncommon for men to see to do the housework but it wasn't from a place of like my mom is domineering or my dad is being some submissive or feminine and it was it was like he seems to be it's just his he, preference. he likes to do that. he's a very hard worker and so it's almost like i think he can be a workaholic and it's like hey you have to like stop yeah and that's it's hard for him to rest but i think you know so that when i look at it i'm i think that you know it is tiring when you're at a job all day so i think they're they're there is a give and take, I think also, but it, it, it's tiring if you're managing a household. I, I, I don't think that some of the more masculine jobs, like taking out the trash, yard work, that kind of thing, I would expect him to, to do. Also, it's stuff like dealing with, if there's a leak, that's what I need him to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, but like laundry, dishes, mopping, vacuuming. Yeah, I would be, I'm, I'm happy to, to take on that responsibility and then i think if we're both working then i think then that's when you start all right you have two incomes so now we have to find a we have to pay for my we have to pay for like help my 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 best friend she always says she's like i am super excited to help my assistant manage my household that's what she always said lord have mercy <laughs> can't relate okay what do you think leonardo i'm too hot for housework so <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's below what me. What do you think, Riley? <laughs> Women should handle all the housework. I think that if a man has to go out and work and provide and give all of his energy to his job, he should at least be able to come home to a happy wife with dinner on the table, not like the house being organized. I feel like it's very simple things to ask. I honestly can't believe Andrew Tate hasn't married you already. <laughs> it's, it's like a mystery. He's about to hit you up. He's missing. Got <laughs> no. What do you think? I think the complete opposite. I think well, because for me, I want to work when I'm older. Uh, yeah, I want to work when I'm older, and then obviously, I want my husband to work or whoever. But I do believe in split like chores. Like, but with me, with, when it comes to like dishes or anything, I was raised if you like. If your plate's dirty, you have to wash your own dish. Okay, what if uh, your husband cooks the food? Say he likes cooking then and he I'll makes a meal. Then I'll be happy, sorry. Okay. But then I'll be happy to wash the dishes. So yeah, now I'm since, grateful. Since you said you want to work, do you also want to be a mom? I've thought about it. I'm 18, I'm young. So, but when I do think about kids, maybe. Like, maybe like later down the line. I don't know what age, just... Okay. I, I don't know. If you had kids, would you still want to be at work all day? No. Or I would I would eventually want to go back to it. Like when they were older or yeah. something? Okay. That's because that's what my mom's doing because I have two twin siblings. And, um, well, 
she had she had to quit her job because of like personal reasons between her boss but um she wants to get a job now that my siblings are growing older okay because she feels like she's just at home all day and it's just like like there's they're old enough to do their own things now okay well what about you Rekha? um the question was do you think that we should like both do equal chores yeah like if you're if you're either living with your boyfriend you're married are you guys gonna split the housework do you think that's woman's work what do you think yeah i mean it, it depends if he's like working all day i'm happy to stay home and do the chores if i'm not working but if i am working i think we should split it evenly i feel like that's the most logical response yeah yeah i, I think i would agree with that Okay, so for all of you who said if we're both working, we should split the chores, so we should split the housework. Does that mean, because this is how I see it playing out in the real world, that means he has to take care of the plumbing leak, he has to unclog the toilet if you can't do it yourself with the plunger, he's got to like fix stuff, mow the lawn, do the trimming, take out the trash, take the car to get the oil changed, all that kind of stuff, and split the chores? Well, do you what feel do like you... it would be... What would be the chores? Because, like, just, I, in just that case... things that people usually consider, like, housework that, like, a 1950s housewife would do. So, like, dishes, laundry, mopping, uh, sweeping, dusting, organizing. Cleaning. I mean, I'm sure you could find an even split with that. Like, maybe if he does that, like, the car work and the piping and whatever, then you could do the dishes and the kitchen work and then clean... The rest of the house would be, um, I don't know, there would be a way to make it proportional. So, but then don't you get into this thing where we're keeping track and we've got like a sheet and we have to tally it and then the woman, because this is what yes, I Yes, and that is relationship is going to be great. Right, exactly. That's what I always <laughs> see is like the woman will be like, well, but I did the laundry on Saturday and then when you didn't do the laundry on Tuesday, I had to do it. Now I'm upset with you and he's like, but I had to mow the lawn and you don't mow the lawn. And then you get into this like points keeping score well this keeping. is all talking i you know idealistically and none of it's real practical i mean right. anybody who's ever been with a man realizes that you tend to see things messy before he does yeah. you tend to be bothered by uh things not being organized or clean way before he does unless you're dating somebody who's really got like the type yeah. a dad the right type it like i have kind of a type a dad who likes to do that but in general, yeah, I, was I feel gonna like. Say, like I feel like in a healthy relationship, though, like obviously that could be an issue. But like with my parents, for example, like my dad would like <coughs> offer to wash the dishes or offer to mow the lawn because he wanted to take something off my mother's back, yeah. and it was because he loved her. So it's like if you love each other and care about each other in a relationship, I feel like you'll want to take on certain chores for them or want to do certain things for them. Yeah, I think whatever you should work out whatever split doesn't make one partner feel especially burdened. Mm. And like if you feel like your children are helping to take care of each other in a sense and you don't feel especially burdened by the housework, then that sounds healthy. Yeah. But there might be some women who maybe the child has a disorder or something is different that she's going to feel especially burdened and she's not going to be happy. She's going to be resentful if the man isn't, you know, doing laundry once a week. Guys, like, guys, why aren't we all just hiring Mexicans? I mean... <laughs> We have enough of them. I mean, <laughs> they could do the the fix the leak and clean the house. I mean, versatile. Well, here's something interesting. When they do surveys among divorced couples and the woman initiates the divorce, one of the top reasons she always gives is she feels like I feel like right. They never say I think they say I feel like mm -hmm. uh, he didn't do enough for me. Right. It's like the number one thing. And I think that we give women like a totally like overblown expectation that men are supposed to like serve us or be doing he wasn't emotionally taking care of me usually means like i wanted him to anticipate that i wanted him to do a bunch of shit that he would never think about that i would want him to do and stuff like that so if we see that women are just generally always dissatisfied they don't think their partner as a man partner i don't do the partnership thing but they always say my partner isn't supporting me he's not giving me enough he's not doing enough you know what me. that usually like, means He's not good in bed. That's why she's upset. <laughs> well, I have a I'm question. Telling you, well, I'm, you, so, I'm sorry. You no, just no, you do your question. woman right, and she'll clean the dishes, dude. I mean, that's how, kind of well, how it works in the Wilson house. But <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I'm hearing a lot of like, you know, women initiate divorces. I'm just curious because you've gotten divorced. Did you initiate your no. divorces? Nope. Neither, neither one. Divorces? No, I got abandoned twice. Two major L's for me. 
too big. So, I mean, it, what it a sounds loser. like you I'm would super have loser. to agree that sometimes men can be the problem, whether they initiate the divorce or well, leave you. I all mean, people can be problems, but... Yeah, so why do you assume that in all these cases it's women saying, well, I feel this way and she's well, secretly I'll tell you in the wrong? Because we choose them. I did not have to make babies with either of those guys. I did not have to marry my ex-husband. I chose them. And then when I got what I ordered... It didn't turn out to be what I thought it was. And well, I'm not saying that, I shouldn't have to say this, but I do. I'm not saying abuse is ever okay. But what I am saying is that women think that, that we're going to be the gatekeepers of sex. We're going to be the choosers. We're going to pick the guys. And then we have ridiculous expectations. We think that it's going to be Disney princess like Grid One Motorsports is saying. At least a lot of women do. They have expectations that don't match reality. They want the man to provide. They want the man to lead. They want the man to. Isn't that what you thought? But I, I'm interested, actually. Are, that's what everyone. But then when he does that, do, they're so like, right. "Oh, he's controlling. He's abusing. I am he's not interested. Doing I am interested to know what you think, because biblically, man, the man is called is is has the higher calling. The yeah. man is called to emulate Christ. The woman is called to emulate the church. This is not an argument for women to just. I mean, oh, whatever. But I'm 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 interested to know what you think about that because it it's harder to be like christ than it is to be like yeah. the church and christ gave his life for the church he loved her gave his life for her and while the church is supposed to submit just like the wife submits to the husband i do think that is the harder role and so more responsibility it shouldn't necessarily be tit for tat i think in, in right the male actually has the higher calling and the more responsibility. I agree with that, but where I went wrong when I was young was I had a very normie, I was Christian, but I was like a cultural Protestant Christian. I thought, like if you'd asked me at the time, I was serious about it, but I also had this like, we were talking about the libertarian American idea. And when I was young, I had this, I bought into the stupid shit that a lot of us buy into, like, oh, we don't need a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're going to get married eventually. I'm sure it will happen. We've mm -hmm. talked about it. So it's fine that we're living together now. Like I made all these little concessions. I made all these little excuses yeah. for things I thought were fine. And it was like, well, I'm a really capable person and I can do it myself. I just had like the whole wrong view of the world and relationships and how that works. Mm -hmm. Part of that is I had a Marxist feminist mother who was deeply indoctrinated. What? Yeah. And she would, you know, kind of share this stuff with me and uh, divorce my dad, kicked him out of the house. And so it was like, comparatively, I thought I was pretty conservative, but yeah. I was basically just like a normie girl who was like, I'll just live with my boyfriend because it's practical and we'll split, split the bills. And then when that didn't work out, I was like devastated. And mm -hmm. now, of course, 43-year-old me would look back and be like, oh, honey, you were so silly thinking, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. oh, we're just going to live together and that'll work out. Um, did but you, I think most sorry. women do that. I think they think it's fine. I'm sorry. Uh, did you convert after you married your husband now? Yeah. We both converted at the same time, uh, like three and a half years ago, to orthodoxy. We went from being like normie, non-denominational Protestants to being like more conservative Protestants and then realizing there's a whole batch of problems that comes with that. And then looking for answers in church history, do a little digging on the history of the church and you find the Orthodox church and there's kind of no turning back after that, at least for us. So I'm just saying like, I think this whole modern idea of we're going to have an egalitarian relationship where I work and he works and we're going to raise the kids together and we're going to be partners and we're going to share the chores. It doesn't really work very well for most people in reality. And we can see that in the extremely low rates of marriage and the really high rates of divorce and just the general dissatisfaction. This whole podcast exists because people can't figure out what the hell is going on with male female relationships well what if both parties do work then because i mean a lot of people both parties have to work well, because of our economy at this that's time that's true that's but the reason they have right, to work economy. is because women joined the workforce in huge numbers in the 70s and wages for men have been stagnant ever since then have not kept up with inflation so yeah now we're in a position where a lot of moms have to work now well, they the, made they they made the women have to join the workforce because right. the economy was already doing what it was doing. And the whole point, like one of the big purposes, no women, women want to join the workforce. That's just uh, oh, it's, it's so stupid. My so, my okay. oldest daughter, when she started working, she like graduated high school and started working. She called me and she's like, "Mom, 
<laughs> why do we do this? Why do we pretend that working a job is awesome and that we love it? This is stupid and I hate it. And I was like, yep. Unless yeah. you have a real purpose, there are, listen, there's a, there's a, sm a small percentage yeah. of women who have a real purpose, they have real talent that should not be wasted. Right. I 100% agree with that. And that's okay. But it's the same way that we push everybody into college and not everybody belongs in college. If you have a real intellect, you have a real passion for something you're studying, go for it. Yeah. Um, I feel like that didn't really answer my question because I don't really mind, like, I mean, I, if I could control it, then I guess because well, you of my... can. Here's my answer to that because people ask me this. They're like, "Well, but I have to work," and I'm like, "You don't. You would just have to make a lot of choices you don't want to make. You'd have to make a lot of compromises you don't want to. You might have to move to a cheap area in the rural Midwest where you can afford to stay home. You might have to work part time remotely from home so that you can prioritize the kids. There are ways to do it." You might have to have a cash. We might card have to cheap. have a financial revolution and overthrow the existing. I was going to say it sounds like oppression. financial collapse will have to happen because if women exit the workforce en masse, then you're just going to run into a bunch of different problems. If everyone moves to the Midwest en masse, property value, property costs, cost of living well, is just going to go up. There's a difference it's not between happen, if you're People asking me for my prescription. Want. There's a difference between what I would prescribe for an individual person right now dealing with the system we're in versus what I would prescribe for the system long term. Long term, I think feminism will be looked back upon as like this awful disaster that we tried and it failed and well, it was horrible and we're going to not. We're going to be ruled by feminist gargoyles for a while. So we are, but the problem with it is that it's literally not sustainable. Mm -hmm. South Korea, the most westernized Asian country has a birth rate of 0 0.78 uh, Japan and Canada are now euthanizing the elderly because there's more elderly people in diapers than there are babies in diapers uh, the supply chain problems that we've been dealing with since the cough cough stuff has never gone away because we actually can't import enough illegal immigrants to keep up with the supply and demand of what we need in the country so so, Rachel, before you get further into this, do you yeah. want to ask everyone who identifies as a feminist Oh yeah, let's go around the table. Yeah, Who's a feminist? Yeah. You are? I'll start. I identify as a feminist. In, in my beliefs, that feminism to me is just equality. I believe in equality for men and women. Okay. And that's how, just... How do we have equality if the men have to enforce women's rights on their behalf? If the men have to allow us, if the men go, we bestow upon you and gift you this equality, is that equal? Wait, what? Let everybody answer first. Okay. okay. Sorry, Brian, I can't run your show. <laughs> I'm not, I can't be yeah, Brian. Only I'm one sorry. person can be Brian. Are you Brian. Just around, I guess, <laughs> um, I would say, based off like the definition of it, or I, I, okay, I honestly don't know like the textbook de definition, so don't like quote me on anything, but I think the way that it is now and based off a lot of feminists that I've met, I would say no, just because I don't agree with what a lot of they agree with, but like, I think like baseline I think everyone believes in equality as like a general thing like I don't think that's like a crazy thing to want so okay. but I wouldn't consider myself a feminist yes I am a first wave feminist I believe that women should have the right to vote mm -hmm. oh good we can get into that those principles that came with that and then the second wave in the 70s I, I think that has been more detrimental okay what do you think my name is Leonardo, and I'm recovering from feminism. <laughs> it's been four years, seven months, and 32 days since I've taken a drink of equality. <laughs> okay, what about Riley? I am not a feminist. Okay. Sh I'm shocked. <laughs> what? I would consider myself, consider myself I am not, just because I agree and disagree with a couple of things, but I don't have much knowledge on it, that topic. Okay. Yeah, I think what you said was perfect. I feel that exact way. I like to call myself a feminist, but a lot of the things that um, feminists believe... I mean, again, there are so many different people call themselves feminists. There's not really a one thing where someone says, I'm a feminist, and they all agree. So. Okay, that's true. So what if I defined it this way? What if my definition was anything that, that is oppositional to patriarchy and patriarchy just means rule by the father it means the father's the head of the household men run the government men run the church patriarchy right what would you would you change would anyone change their answer if i defined it that way is anybody here like against patriarchy for patriarchy well it sounds like patriarchy led us into this because if if men 
are bestowing rights upon women. Men at any time could take it back. Men are... We, we live under a natural patriarchy, mm -hmm. and yet this is the situation we're in that, according to you, it, you know, we're not at replacement birth rates, but it sounds like men did not do a very good job leading us into a beneficial situation. It sounds like they allowed a lot of pretty shitty things to happen, and right, so I, don't know if, I don't know if giving them the power is really such a good idea then. Well, now let's get into this. So do you think that when I say patriarchy, that means all men have all the same amount of power, that Brian has the same amount of power as like Donald Trump or, no. uh, you know, or is there hierarchy within the male sphere of patriarchy where there are certain people who have certain men who have more power than others? Well, yeah, I think there's always going to be a hierarchy of power. Okay. So if you think there's always going to be a hierarchy of power, how are you a Marxist? I'm not really like a prescription prescriptive Marxist, but I am a Mark. I mean, I think a lot of people don't really know what Marxism is. I've never actually read Marx. I'm a Marxist in the sense that I'm like a historical materialist. And like uh. when I think about things philosophically, I tend to think about them dialectically. But like in terms of what I think the world should look like, I wouldn't really say I'm like Hegelianly. I don't. I don't, exactly. I don't want like a no. I'm not a. I'm not a Hegelian. Um, but well, if you if you're doing historical materialism and dialectics, then you would be Hegelian, like by definition. No, Marx and Hegel did not have the same definition of like a what the dialectic is necessarily. I I think there's some. I don't. We don't really need to yeah. get into like I don't Hegelian. Know if that might be a little much for it's the a podcast. Boring, but but I I think that um, I don't necessarily think I want to live in like a classless, stateless, moneyless society. So I wouldn't so, say I'm like a prescription. Like, but you would say you think patriarchy is not valid. You think there should be like women in positions of leadership or? Well, I mean, I'm saying that from your perspective, it sounds like patriarchy has failed. Patriarchy failed us. Men have failed to utilize their power effectively and bring us into a birth rates are falling terrible things are happening women are running amok being degenerates it sounds like men have failed so maybe their time has time has come to get out of power i don't know well i think that they will take power back i think it's inevitable they kind of have to because this whole thing is kind of like a short-term illusion to me like women don't have actual like natural rights in the way that we define them in the west it's all just enabled by men now we talked a little bit about which men and why uh, it was generally like the really wealthy elites who wanted, why did they want this, right? Why did they want women's liberation? They wanted it because they were the same folks who went to the Jekyll Island Club and drafted the Federal Reserve legislation. They were the same people who had these giant factories and needed tons of cheap labor and couldn't import enough Chinese and, and you know poor European immigrants at the time to fill the factories. So it would be really nice if you could get a bunch of women in there and some good cheap labor. Uh, and it also gave them the opportunity to institute the public education system, which is just an indoctrination camp Correct. for them to them for the federal government to be able to That's why everybody's uh, got to read Anne Frank's diary in third grade exactly so you just you, she didn't so even you're write just saying that the wrong men have been in power the patriarchy has enabled the wrong men to come into power and lead us I think astray. I think psychopaths kind of yeah. almost always rise to the top history is, is basically just a story of a bunch of different psychopathic criminal gangs vying for power and right now the criminal gang that's been in power wants women's liberation because it's a means to their ends so then I would say I don't see how Sorry. It's okay. Okay. Femi I think that because patriarchy is inevitable that's why feminism is necessary there needs to be like a force of women pushing back in whatever way they can against men's inevitable greater force and I think that if you have women that aren't pushing back then men are going to lead us into I mean but how are they pushing place. back by like whining like extra loud whining well I mean or, well, but that's, extra but crying see, but see I feel I feel More like crying? you're that's an, that's anti-christian it's not because though. obviously Ooh, Jesus <laughs> highly val I mean the first person he appears to after the resurrection was a woman right so off and 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 the fact that the the gospels place such a high value on women for a for that day and age is i mean it was groundbreaking it was I nothing agree with you, but so they there is, is a, there a such high a thing, value for a woman is, women well, let's within get into christianity this absolutely is there such a thing as christian feminism can you be a christian feminist i think you can be i think christianity is in and of itself pro woman Okay, but that's different than it being well, yeah, yeah. No, oppositional do you, do you, to I patriarchy. Don't I don't think I can align Christianity with a 
ideology, another well, ideology. Do you, I don't think that, I think that Christianity is above and beyond it. And right, it's, but so do you, you, you know what Paul said about women being in the church, right? Paul talks about a woman should not instruct men. Uh-huh. He doesn't say that women should not instruct, like, there is leverage for a woman counseling a man, i.e. her. And there, in the Bible, it's very clear that, like, a woman is only under the authority of her husband. And not all, not all husbands. Not the all church, men. Right. And the church. Of course and not. and, we're, and we're I not think saying. I think there's and and here's another thing. What's interesting is that the Bible acts and Luke and they are or in all of his epistles, Paul frequently says, you know, like Priscilla, Lydia. He's he's noting he he actually went out like for Lydia, he went out, she was by the river, she was she was a seller of purple cloth. So he, he went out and, and they had they were having a discussion, an intellectual discussion, and she became a huge uh, supporter of his ministry right, but, and, and but uh, were women in any place in the it. bible were they rulers of men Deborah. were they priests Deborah. no she was that she judges. was a judge and a prophetess where yeah, where in the church <laughs> yeah you go around the table and ask who is more oppressed men or women nick okay. sorry sorry <sighs> okay around the table. Go ahead. no female priests and <laughs> christian christianity is a patriarchy period end of story they're li we literally have patriarchs, just saying, but go ahead. <laughs> just look up Deborah. <clears throat> she was not a priest. Um, she didn't have authority over But she was a judge. She, she that, 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 they gave her authority. She literally told... She, she told wasn't subject to, go into to battle. the king. She was subject to the king. There was no the king in the time of judges. You I have your church history wrong. You have your church men. history wrong. <laughs> there, the judges was no, the period before kings. There were no... You the first king was Saul. And the judge of period was before Saul. So that's actually incorrect. Do you think that Deborah told the priests... <laughs> There were what to do. She, there were priests yes, at she the told, time there, of Deborah. Yes, there were in the line of Levi, and they went to war. She told Barak to go and fight, and he said, "I need you by my side." And she said, "Just so you know, people are going to laugh at you because you have a woman with you leading, like going so, out and leading before." And he said, "I know, and I'll do it." And so she, you think that Christian judges women four, can judges rule four. men? You think that Christian women should be in charge of the church? How is that inferred in from government? an example of Then what's of your Deborah? point? Because you do a lot of prattling, but you don't ever get around to the damn. As point. do you, girl. Takes one to know one. But here's the thing. You so 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 yes, I think there is there are you asked if there was a biblical example so of a woman priest. This is an example of women, women should rule. I'm asking if you want if women a woman pastors. should lead a man. If there's an example in the Bible, I said there is. I referenced Deborah, and so do I think women can lead churches? She did not have I, I I actually I do think I think that there is room for it. My, oh my I do. God, Her, that's total heresy. Women cannot be priests, they cannot be pastors, they can't be bishops, they can't be patriarchs. But is definition. that religion or is that doctor like that is, is that the is that scripture that Christ established? Christ came to establish his church, not leave you a book that is open to your interpretation where you can go, actually, I can be a lady preacher. I just finished my OnlyFans and I'm saved now. So I'm going to start the church of me. And well, I'm going to be the priest. First of all, just the fact that you referred to the Bible, which is the inspired word of God as a book that is you can it interpret. Is not a book? That is like, is that. I think book? that's heretical. But is it a book? Is it a book? Yes. Is okay. it inspired by God? Yes. Is absolutely it, but can is it you, inerrant can you is it inerrant it is but can okay, you okay, interpret it individually on your own or no, do you, you need, need the, the inspiration of the holy spirit oh and if if you think the holy spirit says the holy this, spirit sounds and so this is holy for everybody who's watching else. at home and doesn't understand what's happening right now we are in the middle of the schism i was gonna say okay. it's happening true. again this <laughs> is the orthodox versus the protestants the protestants believe in sola scriptura only yes. the bible and the orthodox believe in the apostles apostolic succession that uh what the what's been handed down from the time of yes. jesus to the apostles and how you know is that they're king wrong, over the bible how you know they're wrong is they have gay flags hanging off their churches and they have lady preachers and women's bible studies. okay this Period is from the woman who I thought win. okay just saying <laughs> she thought that judges came during the time of kings so she obviously doesn't this. know her church history that well but there were kings in the world at the time of judges in the old testament Yes, there were male. No, the, who was the first king of Israel? So, um, do you guys use dating Saul. apps or yeah, what's happening? I don't think that Christian Nick and Brian want to stay on this. Can you come back to the religious thing? So, I don't like dating apps because. I've never been on a dating app ever in my life. 
Ooh, Christian mingle. Well, I think the problem in Christian mingle is the Protestants are going to go to war with the Orthodox. Again. No, there's nothing wrong with the Orthodox. I'm just saying, I think that you need to have room for leverage. You need to have room for, and I'm not saying okay. leverage as in like, I want to interpret it as I want to interpret it. I'm just saying that Ask like, I think it's she's con- she's like, strong. Deborah obviously was a leader and she was a woman. Yes. So I, the fact that that example is in the Bible, which is the inspired word of God, means that obviously there is room for female leadership within the church. Now, what that no. looks like, whether the. Uh, okay. Just then. no, absolutely not. Never. You should cover your head and you should be quiet and you should not so, ever have a role of leadership. Now, if you have a limited situation where, like, Maybe you need this woman to go over here and minister to some children because there isn't a deacon or something and it's a, a certain situation. Maybe. But as a general rule, absolutely not. Women are not to lead or teach in the church. It's very clear all throughout scripture. We have like 4,000 years of history Deacon on that. GM Deacon donated $200. First Timothy 2.12. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to use up authority over the man, but to be in silence. Brixen, get your big jumper back in your chair. <laughs> yeah, Brixen, Brian with an X. We I just don't know can't. Where that came from. And there's Miriam. There, I mean, there, there's Esther. So there, women there are there are examples not of lead, women who are in leader. Priests. But I just don't know how you. Oh, oh, well, I'm what not you, saying Deborah was a priest. Right. Stop saying that. I'm saying that because I'm not saying. Well, what's that. your point? I'm saying that obviously there's a lady room. did something important. Shut up and let me speak. Ooh. Ooh. Obviously, I'm saying that there's. I would room. just like Wait. to point out that there's, she showed everybody her butt so they know what they're getting on OnlyFans. <laughs> okay, that was very. That was very. in my chair. That was very smooth, I gotta say. I gotta say, that was slick. I was trying to figure out how to show my butt without making it obvious, and I wish I'd thought of that. Because everybody on the internet wants to see my butt. You know what? I would like to apologize, because that was rude. And the Holy Spirit is convicting me. The Holy Spirit is convicting me. So I apologize. What is that? (laughs) Apology accepted, but you're still wrong. I apologize for being rude. You're back now. You see what happens when a man leaves the table? Uh, Mayhem. Mayhem. Leave you guys Absolute alone. Absolute chaos. I got a couple things here. First off, put your swords away for a second here, okay? I do have to make one thing. Apparently, Lee, I was gone while you said this, Leonardo. You said something about Mexicans disavow. <laughs> He doesn't know what it was. but just I don't know. I, I just saw the chat was like, whoa, she's racist. The views expressed by the panelists... And by panelists, I, I mean, mean if Leonardo, anybody took five I, minutes to look at my Twitter, you would know I was racist, you're comedian, and this wouldn't be surprising to anyone. You're a comedian, you. though. You're joking. Anyway, she's joking, guys. <laughs> Everything about, I say uh, is a joke. Don't yeah, take any don't of take it seriously. Serious. What is she's wrong with you guys? Guys, she is literally a. Com- you're literally. You're literally a listening to a woman on the internet. Like, come well, on. on. Let's not go too far now. But uh, disavow. Like I disavow. As what did I say? I said we should give them jobs. Uh, I didn't say we should deport them yeah, all. You don't have to repeat it. Because that don't plan have to has it. been shunned. Uh, don't it have should to be number one. But if, because we're not going to do that, let's let them work. What's the problem? Well, what's the problem? <laughs> Wait, are you from you're from the East Coast, right? I'm from New York. I'm from the Bronx. I was born and raised. Oh, well, what are you no, I was I was about? raised. Forget I was born it. in Montenegro. That's Forget something. about it. Nice. Yeah. You ever been to uh, what's it called? Uh, White Plains. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I got some family in in White Plains. You got some family in White Plains. Family Maybe White your family Plains. knows my family. I don't Maybe, know. Maybe uh, we might be related. <laughs> we might know each other somewhere. In some sort of way. Some kind of way. There you go. Okay. All right. And you get one. Yeah. Kind of like that. What about you? Absolutely. Pay, Absolutely what? Pay on the first date. The guy should pay on the first date. Yes. Okay. What about you? Yes, the guy should pay on the first date. The guy should pay on the first date. I don't think so. I mean, look, if they're asking for, they, they're like, I want to take you to a super expensive restaurant. I don't have the money for that. I'm going to communicate that. And if they're like, okay, then let's go somewhere cheaper. Cool. That's fine with me. I don't care. Okay. But I will split. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. So if. He's asking you somewhere expensive, then, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What about you? Who should pay? Men. Men should pay. Okay. Didn't you say you were feminist? (laughs) Feminist, feminist, feminist. Not a feminist. Not a feminist. Feminist. Okay. Uh, Here's another question that we can kind of uh, figure out here. Uh, Should women be drafted? (laughs) This is this is in efforts to to figure out if you guys are feminist or not. Um, Should women be drafted in the military? Mm. Like, 
By draft day, do you mean like when you turn 18, like you're automatically Okay, yeah, so men have to register for the selective service. Currently, there's not a draft in the United States, mm -hmm. but all men in the United States at, uh, at 18, in order to be able to vote and have other benefits, they have to register for the selective service, which would then make them subject to military conscription in the case that there was a uh, military conflict which uh, required a draft. So do you think women should be subject to uh, selective service draft? Forced? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Okay. I wouldn't even trust women to like fight for our, our country unless that's like their that's their thing. You know, like if you're like that type of woman that you feel like so you're so stronger and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But I just feel like no. Okay. What do you think? Well, hold on. So you think they should be drafted based on how they feel? No, about no, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying if, like, willingly, if you just want to. She's go. saying if they want to. They all just really want to volunteer. Yeah, yeah. If they want to volunteer, yes. Yeah, but, but then uh, yeah, this just defeats the purpose. Is, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean. Right. Well, that's what we currently have. Yeah, but uh, I, yeah, I guess we should be drafted because I mean. Okay. All right. I mean, I'm plenty of men don't want to join. <laughs> okay. True. Plenty of men. I'm plenty of men. Plenty of women. Doesn't matter. Okay. If we gotta do what we gotta do, I mean. Yeah. Now here's the interesting thing. You guys both have different opinions on this. I still don't know which is actually like the actual feminist position because it will have feminists who will argue it's actually we had one last week with Andrew yeah. who said well it's not it, it's not equitable it's not equity for women to be drafted that's a whole nother thing Interesting. but what about you no no okay no women should not be drafted. should not be drafted no but they should be paid equally in sporting mm. events no comment okay <laughs> no they shouldn't be drafted? I don't think so. Well, hold okay, on. Okay, so everybody except Anza yeah. said women shouldn't be drafted. <laughs> but y'all want to be equal? So wait a sec. How are you equal if the men are the ones that have to fight and die to defend the country? The men are the ones that build and maintain all the infrastructure, right? Like none of this stuff in the studio is built or maintained by women. Do you know that like 90% of infrastructure jobs are still held by men? Mm -hmm. And that if you look at the top 20 jobs held by women now in 2024 versus 1924 are almost the exact same. So women have had 100 years to do whatever they want and they still do the same 20 jobs they did 100 years ago other than we switched out farm labor for HR work. But other than that, we're secretaries, nurses, daycare ladies, uh, early childhood education, uh, administrative assistants, retail workers, all the same shit that we were a century ago. <laughs> so if the men are the ones tasked with every time there's a natural disaster, they have to go out and rescue people from the fires and the floodwaters. And every time there's a war, the men have to go and fight it and defend the country. And any time there's a criminal who needs to be violently arrested, it's going to be a man who goes and does that, not a woman. Where does the equality come in? If we're doing the fluffy jobs, you know, we're all singers. We got a lot of singers and musicians, which is cool. It's great. I love music too. But y'all ain't like rescuing people and, uh, you know, doing the, doing the heavy lifting or the dirty or the dangerous jobs. Like who collects the trash? Men. You know, who uh, does all the steel working and oil rig work and uh, all of the like sewer cleaning? Men. We have a video on this, Rachel, actually. Nick, remember that video we were looking at yesterday? <laughs> I think it might still be on one of the tabs. Let's watch this. No audio. No audio. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Are you ready to work on an oil rig? All right. Those Come on, are, feminists, get in there. You those can do are it. some rough necks. Come That's, on, ladies. Ladies, anyone? Andrew, Andrew had to do that. stuff like that back in the day. They'd lower him underwater into the Underwater welding, I not, guess? Terrible. Not or, underwater, but they would lower him into these tiny little horrifically frightening spaces to do extremely dangerous stuff. I'm claustrophobic. I really feel like yeah. women should just have the choice to do if they want to, because I know some women that can handle it. They do have the yeah. choice, and they're That's not. They do, it. and they're, and they're not, not doing it. They don't fun. want to. Well, this I mean, is, well, this is the big secret, yeah. right? Is that women don't want to do any of this dirty, so. dangerous, scary stuff. They don't want to. Well, yeah, but is that just you know what we've been raised with the culture no. we're surrounded by no and i have data to back this up so, so okay if you oh is there more nick <laughs> just let it play <laughs> yeah we'll just let it play so back around the time of suffrage we're talking like 1850s to 1920 roughly around there when the big yeah. suffrage movement was happening um 
The, the, did you guys know that most women were completely against it? By mm -hmm. all of the uh, referendums that they would do where they would let women vote on whether they wanted to vote, only about 4% actually had any interest in voting. Mm -hmm. And they actually had really good reasons for this. There was much higher membership in anti-suffrage groups than pro-suffrage groups. And these groups would do public debates. They would do written debates, uh, newspaper periodicals where they would go back and forth and debate these things. And the women who were against suffrage said, look, the primary purpose of government is to protect persons and property, okay? Why task women with that when we're not really capable of doing that, okay? Uh, we don't want to have to be drafted. We don't want to have to do jury duty. We don't want to have to be a political block because back then women had advocacy groups for thing they, things they wanted, but they weren't a lobbying group. They didn't have like voting rights, so they weren't able to be as easily politicized. They felt like they had a moral high ground to ask for things like, we need more parks, we need better schools, we need clean air, whatever it was. Um, and that if they became just another voting block, they would be involved in dirty politics and they didn't want to do that. They felt like somebody has to be morally neutral and not involved in politics. So given all of that, do you guys think that women can protect and defend persons and property? Sure. You okay, I mean, I, well, first of all, I want to go back to the fact that for a long time, women weren't allowed to own property, or at least not without being married. And so... Actually, it was the opposite. It was once you got married, you generally, whatever belonged to you, belonged sure, to your Sure, but then so usually the woman is still living with the family. Right, and but why would you... So think about yeah. why. Why would why you want to live on your own? Why do you think women didn't own property? Well, do, you, do you think it was just the patriarchy, like just no, hated I'm not the saying women, that. and I'm they not just saying wanted that. to put their boot on their neck and keep them down? I or? generally don't think that. Okay, I generally, think? I, I generally think it was just a matter of the times, like you know, the, we because it was. I mean, so you, do you think there was a reason, though? Do you think there was a logic behind not letting? I think women it worked for back then. I, I think it worked for what it is at that point in time. No, I think I don't think you understand what I'm sure. saying. So, okay. if you're a woman yeah. and you own land and it's 1802. Mm -hmm and bandits or cattle robbers or um, Indians come and they say, we're taking your land. Yeah. What are you gonna do about it? But that's exactly my point. That worked for that time. Okay, what's different now? We don't have that as much. I mean, it depends on the neighborhood, of course. I mean, it depends on the community, Okay, so if you own land now in 2024 mm -hmm. and you have a squatter who comes and squats <laughs> on your property and you need them removed, I did do that. you call do you call ladies to come and physically remove them? Or are there men who come and physically remove them? So I had a subleaser who I needed to get rid of. And I did all of it. My landlord didn't do anything. Okay, what'd you do? I went to the court. And okay. I got the papers. I took her to court. I won. Oh, wait, it was a woman squatter? Uh, yeah. Oh. Well, okay. Oh. But did you physically remove her? Or... Did cops come? Well, did she willingly, after the judgment from the court, she willingly left? So, okay. The lease was up. She refused to leave. And uh, and so, um, you know, I got the paperwork. Um, I gave her the three-day notice to vacate, which is the proper way to... Right. You're going through the eviction process. Exactly. Yeah. And so then, you know, uh, and she was still like, that's not right. That's, you're, it's totally illegal, even though I got it literally from the courthouse. And so then we're like, okay, let's get the proper eviction papers. Mind you, we still uh, had um, the papers escorted by okay, so, cops. So, so did, did you, you both went to the court and there was like the eviction trial? Yeah, we did. Okay. Well, I mean, what the eviction trial. So, then, she, so she did leave within the five days of receiving the eviction. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, so let's say she stayed there, right? Yeah. Because I think this is what Rachel is getting at. Let's say she stayed there. You went, you you even won the eviction case. Yeah. The judge did an order. I don't know. Typically after the eviction, I think they have a, another period of time. It depends on the state. Yeah. It can be 10 days, 30 days, whatever it is. And then the cops will come after a certain period of time and then forcibly remove the person. Mm -hmm. I think what Rachel's trying to get at is right. who's going to forcibly remove the person, whether man or woman, if they were even after getting a judgment from a court they still refuse to leave. Right, okay. Um, so in this case, um, because she left within the five days, I didn't have to have like, the sheriff remove her. Right. But, um, in, I mean, at least when uh, I was giving the papers, the cops that were there were men and women. Yes, primarily men. But there were women. I mean, right. who's to but, say there can't be more? Well, you, you're talking about the process server? So you served her with the... 
Um, so it was my mother who served her, but because of the threats she was making, we had her escorted uh, by foot patrol. Ah, and that was not like a bunch of strong, independent women who marched. It was a man and a woman. Okay, and if it had just been a woman, do you see what I'm getting at? Do you see like who who defends (laughs) our national borders? Not a bunch of feminists, right? Uh, The use of force is still always going to be men. I mean, of course, like if, when you come uh, down men are taller and bigger, of course, yeah. they're going to they're gonna have no, that physical... <laughs> well, I, I always got it. I right. always understood. Right. I, <laughs> I mean, uh, going back to the sports things, I mean, the men are going to be able to do things that, you know, women right. just physically right. can't. But. So, when we talk about equality, yeah. the only equality women have is the illusion of equality granted to them and provided for them by men. Sure. I mean, that's why I think it depends on the context when it comes to equality, personally. Um, if, you, <laughs> if, you, if you have to appeal to men and say, men, let us be equal. We demand equality. And the men go, fine, we'll enforce equality. For Is that really equality? Well, that's why I think it depends on how it is being handled. Personally, I think... So it's, it's up to the men, <laughs> basically. It's well, always going to... When well, you because they're already in that men. position. If I mean, if that was... I mean, if we could flip it, and then they'd have to ask us, right? I mean, oh, okay, okay. So you think we could put women on all the oil rigs, and we could put women in the Senate, we could put women in the military as generals, we could make them sheriffs, and that would work out fine? Yeah. Do you think so? Okay. So I mean, well, here's the thing. I mean, <laughs> I mean, okay. Uh, for example, I remember watching this one show. Uh, I think it was called Stars and Stripes. And it, it took a bunch of celebrities and put them in the position of military. It had men and had women. The person who ended up winning was uh, the skier Peekaboo Streets. And she, uh, she was a woman. She beat out, actually, um, who the Sarah Payne. Who that guy? Would you rather come across a random man or a random bear in the woods, starting with you? Go ahead. What type of bear? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah. Let's say, okay, so in the same way that it's a random man, it's a random bear that you would find in like, North these, America. A grizzly, a black bear. It could be, it could mm. be a black bear, could be a brown bear, grizzly size. bear. Size? Adult. Regular adult, adult size okay. and an adult, adult man, man and an adult, adult bear. bear. Yes. Um... I'd probably choose the bear. I'm not gonna lie, I'd choose the bear. What about you? I would say, based off my life experience, yeah, I would say probably bear. Based off your life experience? Yeah, yes. Just based off some situations, yeah. I would say bear. So you mean situations you've had with men? Yeah. Have you had any situations with bears? Cable donated $200. Mm, okay. Panda and the rest I mean, of the panel, I'd just like to say from all of us here at the Crucible, yep, thank you, continue Cable. to seethe and cope because based Rachel just destroyed you. Not one step back. Okay. Thank you, Crucible crew. Thank you, Cable. Appreciate it. Okay. What about you? Which do you pick? Definitely a man. I don't. I would be so scared if I saw a bear in the forest. Man. Yeah, man. definitely a man. A bear is like a death sentence. I don't know. I don't know what you guys are thinking. Yeah, a man. A man. Mm-hmm. A bear. A man. Rachel. A man. Wait. So it was bear. <coughs> I think you said man, right? Man. Man. So, bear, bear, bear. Have you, Beats, bears, bow, star, galactica. Okay. Have you, you guys are lying. Have you ever heard the saying online, like, well, a bear wouldn't take off your pants and yes. essay you? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, it'll eat you alive. Yeah. But you that's, like, what? the worst. How many men do you Literally. guys think just randomly essay a lot? <laughs> Well, oh, when you say lot. when you say a lot, so why don't we let's let's look into that. So, well, have what you... proportion? So when it, when I say random man, that would just essentially be plucking any man out of the whole U.S. population. <laughs> so, what percentage of men in the U.S. do you think, if presented with some opportunity to commit this crime, do you think would? Forty percent. Oh my God. What about, oh, I think forty percent. What, what do you think? I honestly don't know. I do think it's a lot lower, but how much? I, was, I don't know. Like. I'm trying to be like unbiased. Um, I don't know, like I, I want to say like only like five. I'm hoping five percent. What about what do you think? Mm, like around, I'd say probably like five to ten percent. We're between that. Okay. Interesting. There's no feminist propaganda though. It's all a lie. So, <laughs> if you, I here's another here's another question. Uh, if 
If you were in the bathroom, would you rather a man or a bear wanders in? Well, a bear can't fucking undo the door, really. So, like, am I in a bathroom? Like, is there a lock on the door? Like, let me know the logistics. Is Let's say it's one of those, yeah, like, high-ceiling bathrooms. Is there a window in this bathroom? Because I'll leave the window and I'll, I'll keep the bear in there. Like, <laughs> It's a high-ceiling bathroom. Yes. And American bathrooms are fucking terrible, so. A high-ceiling. A high-ceiling, which means that the, the divider doesn't go all the way to the top. So, you... The bear could climb over the. Is there like paneling on this? Bears are very good at climbing. I can cling on to. Okay, like... which one do you prefer? <laughs> I'd still probably choose the fucking bear. The bear. Honestly. I don't know. I, I don't know. I guess I got. I guess a man. A man. <laughs> yeah, a man. A man in that situation. Okay. Do you think this is like a city Wait, is girl the, problem? Is the man also crawling over the stall? <laughs> because in that yeah. case, I would change my yeah, answer to a bear. No, I'm not saying. The bear might not do that, but it could. In the same way, the man might not do so that. So it might but just it could. be a man accidentally wandering into the bathroom. Like he's not. He's not like following me into the bathroom. Because yeah, in that case, I'd pick the bear because the bear could be well, just. Oh Why don't the bear and the man? Yeah, have the same. Like, but if a man's following you into the bathroom, it's kind of like a red flag. And he... No, not following you into okay. the bathroom. You're already in the bathroom. A man wanders in, a bear wanders in. Okay, it's in. like a gender-neutral bathroom, and he's just in there it. chilling. No, not gender It's not the woman's a... bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> it's a woman's bathroom in a red state. I might pick the bear, then, because the man probably is up to some nefarious... What if it's a transgender woman? <laughs> well, in that case, oh. she probably just wants to go to the bathroom. I'd pick the transgender woman, yes. What? But it, it's still, it's they're both males. It's more likely that that person's going <laughs> to be both predatory. Males. They're not the transgender oh. women. No. And, and because they're going into the bathroom because it is a fetish. Like, it literally yeah. is a fetish. Well, if Wait, no, if it, oh, What do you... Hold on. Okay. You're, like, generalizing all trans, saying that it's a fetish. It is. Very, well, they're okay. all... Yes. All right, hold, are more on, likely hold on, hold on, hold on. To, uh, you know... I'm mentally ill, and I'm not going to... Not going to linger too long on the bear thing, but... I do want to ask a question for those of you who answered bear. If we replace man with black person, does this question become racist? Well, why, why does it have to be? Oh my God. Like, a, like what? Why does it have to be a man versus a bear? Does the question become racist? It's just a question. I mean, I would, I would still choose the bear because a man, man either way, you know? So uh, but I said black person. Is it racist? Black person, like meaning like female or male? Like, sure. Okay, then I would choose them instead. No, oh, he's, you don't he's, get to choose. Like but he's, asking, so like black one, he's yeah. asking if changing the proposition of the question makes like the question racist. the race of the person, like if it's Here, racist. If, if you, okay, let, let me just ask this. How would you if, feel if you didn't have breakfast this morning? I didn't, so I'm oh, feeling it right now. that's an intelligence. <laughs> no. I actually had an alpha brain for breakfast. Wait. Oh, so Isn't I that some prepared. type of IQ test? Well, it's just, it, it kind of tests your ability to entertain a hypothetical situation. But in that case, it's not a hypothetical situation because she didn't have breakfast. I didn't, so this is how oh, I am. Lord Jesus. No, but <laughs> how would you feel if you didn't have breakfast? Lighter. <laughs> there okay. you go. All right. Wait, so, okay. Here's the question. So if the question is, would you rather come across a random black person or a random bear in the woods? If you answer bear, is your answer racist? What? I'm just if like... you no no no. If you answer bear, is your answer racist? No. No. So, okay. I mean. So, I'm... what's your answer to to that question then? Still the bear. I mean, so you said it's like it could be a man or a woman or it doesn't matter. Actually, just a black actually, person. Actually, honestly, okay, if I'm in the woods and a random person comes up to me, it's going to scare me regardless. So actually... No, 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 no. Okay, but it's know. your... <laughs> <laughs> I know. The original question is, would you ra you're, you're going to come across mm -hmm. either a random man or a mm -hmm. random bear. But I'm asking if we, like, change it for, to race, does it then become a racist... If, you're, if you answer bear, is it a racist answer? I wouldn't think so. I don't think so. Oh. Now, what if the same justifications that you used for picking a bear over a man, the risk of SA, you use those same exact justification and pretext for picking the bear? I'd, I'd rather pick a bear because this racial group... Uh, He's yeah. checking would for it, consistency with Okay, race, fair enough. Right? Would it be racist? Would, would it be racist? What? 
Here, let me ask you the question. Which would you pick, the bear or the? They really don't like this one. OK. No. Well, I mean, I think it, it doesn't so, make sense. Look, because if you, were, to... if you were to say, if you were to change it to like a, a black man, but if you're saying if it was like a black person in general, like a, a woman or like a black child, like I'm pretty, I would choose, I would choose them. Black but if you're saying person. men in general, whether it's black, Asian, whatever, man, I would choose the bear. <laughs> like, I just, I'm just saying like, well, there's a 50% chance you get a man, a 50% chance you get a woman. Well, is there a 50% like I get a Into bear and a 50% Into the mic. Like Into a, the mic. So I get either a good bear or a bad bear or no, like a no. man or a woman. You get a random bear. <sighs> it's mean, not, you don't. Hope it's not a polar bear. No, and you can make bear, and gone. I'm just like and <laughs> I'm just like flipping a coin on whether I get a man or a woman walking through the door I'm like oh my God. I guess look I guess yeah no I would still choose the man or the woman because I guess at least I have the probability of it being a woman okay the point I'm trying to make here if the original if the question of if you change it to like a race-based question yes. if it's racist then it must it must, of course, then be sexist to choose a bear over a man. I think it would be racist if you were to say, were you, if you were to choose a, a, a man or a bear and someone chose a um, man, and if you were to change it to black man and they chose the bear, then it would be racist. I think so. I think, like, I think the reason this question is causing so much kerfuffle online is because it kind of shows how much women think men are inherently abusive, violent, risky, mm -hmm. dangerous, when in actuality, this is super irrational to choose the bear over the man. And so it shows that women are easily propagandized, emotional in their decision making, and that they're not going to accurately assess risk. They're gonna go based off of like emotional impulse. Well, can I, I, it has to do with experience. Life like, experience. Like, I've sure. said life experience for me because like I, my first relationship, my only relationship was the worst I've ever been through my entire life. So for me, based off what I've been through, like- Mr. Bull, 